welcome back. Uh, so, I will uh, like to remind you that last time what we discussed is the vibratory bowel feeder and uh, some aspects of the bowel feeder design. So, we said that how the bowel feeder works. Now, for the design basic thing is to design the, uh, the inclination angle, track inclination angle and the vibration angle. These are the most important things. So, we said that the vibration angle is decided by the suspension springs and how the suspension springs uh, hold the um, ball in the ball feeder. So, uh, for sliding up the track to occur as we said because we have this, uh, uh, this force diagram. So, in this force diagram as you remember we said that this is the total inertia force which is MP mass of the part. A0, A0 is the amplitude of vibration and the omega square, omega is the um, angular frequency. So, this total inertia force can be resolved into the two components. One component is along the track which is M p A0 omega square and the cos psi, okay. psi is the uh, angle between the total inertia force and the line of the track. Okay. So, uh, in here the along the n that is the normal force which is acting on the uh, part this will be similarly m p a 0 omega square and the sin psi all right. Similarly, we have the mass of the part which is acting here as m p into g, g is the gravity and uh, this m p g will be resolved into two components along the n component is the m p g and the cos theta and along the f it is m p g sin theta. So, if it is that in this case for sliding up the track m p a 0 omega square and the cos psi this component has to be more because the part has to slide up the track than the forces acting on the other side and forces acting on the other side will be f and the m p g and the sin theta. So, therefore, f plus m p g sin theta this m p a 0 omega square cos psi has to be more than that, that is one uh, uh, aspect of it. Now, the f which is the friction force because of the normal force acting on the part, this is mu s into n we said n is the normal force and the mu s is the static coefficient of friction between the part and the track. So, therefore, this n we can substitute by the m p g and the cos theta this component minus this component which is m p a 0 omega square and the sin psi that is what we have written here. So, n is substituted by this and therefore, the f becomes this much all right. So, this equation equation 1 this becomes that if we put the value of f as this in this case the uh, equation 1 can be converted to this form converted into this form. Now, uh, from here if we simplify this will be the condition a 0 omega square upon g this has to be more than mu s cos theta plus sin theta divided by cos psi plus mu s sin psi. So, this is the condition for the part to slide up the track that is one thing. So, similarly if you resolve the components in the way when the part is going down the track. So, you will find out that this will be the condition, this will be very similar to this only you can see that this sign is minus. Okay. So, this will be the condition for the track to for the part to, uh, to move down the uh, track that means on the other side. Well, uh, then we said that uh, the operating condition of the vibratory conveyor may be expressed in terms of the normal track acceleration and the normal track acceleration we said as a 0 omega square sin psi because it is a normal omega square. Omega once again is the uh, angular frequency and A 0 is the amplitude of vibration. So, this is the normal track acceleration and the normal acceleration due to gravity will be the g cos theta. All right. So, therefore, the A n by g n becomes A 0 omega square sin psi divided by g cos theta. Now, if we substitute this in the earlier equations then we will be getting this. So, how it is getting uh, let me explain it to you. We have this equation A 0 omega square by g is more than that that is we are getting from here. 
Okay. This is the condition for the part to move up all right. and we have the a n by g n this is equal to this a n by g n we got it from here. Okay. Now, if we substitute this from here we find out that a 0 omega square by g is equal to a n by g n sin psi by uh, sorry cos theta by sin psi. Okay. Now, we will come back to this and we will put this value here in this equation a um, a 0 omega square by g we are substituting by this all right, and we are getting that a n by g n this has to be more than this component. So, therefore, and a n by g n this is the one that we said is the norm is the ratio uh, dimensionless normal track acceleration and uh, this is the way that I mean this is the component by which we are um, defining the performance of the uh, ball feeder. So, a n by g n has to be more than mu s plus tan theta divided by cot psi plus mu s this is for the part to go up the track. Now, we have given an example that for mu is equal to 0 0.8 and the inclination angle is 3 degree and the vibration angle is 30 degree. So, we will be getting that this is the equation all right and the limiting condition for the forward conveying of to occur we are rearranging this and we are getting this. So, finally, what we are saying is that for small uh, inclination angle track inclination angle the tan psi has to be more than the track inclination angle divided by static coefficient of friction and psi once again it is the vibration angle. So, meaning that if we know this uh, equation all right, if we know this uh, inequality in that case if we know this uh, inequality in that case we can find out that what should be the track inclination angle for example, given mu s and the vibration angle what should be the vibration angle if we have a track inclination angle and the static coefficient of friction. This is the advantage of uh, deriving this equation as we call this as the mechanics of vibratory conveying. Okay. Now, here for sufficiently large vibration amplitudes the part will leave the track and hop forward during each cycle. What we are saying is that it is the part which is going along the track for uh, sufficient uh, conveying velocity we have to have the part to leave the track. Okay. Part has to leave the track and hop, hop like a frog. All right. So, that is that for that we require a large vibration amplitudes. Now, the condition for this to occur that means, when the part will leave that means, the n has the normal force n has to be equal to 0. This normal force when the normal force is 0 the part is ready to leave it is not leaving yet it is ready to leave. All right. So, for n is equal to 0 from the figure you can find out that n this will be this value minus this. Okay. So, that is what we are saying that n is equal to m p g cos theta minus m p a 0 omega square and the sin psi. So, when this is equal to 0 the it is the limiting condition for the part to leave the track and the part will leave the track when this is more than that. Okay. So, if we do that if we rearrange this so a 0 omega square upon g this will be more than cos theta divided by sin psi or from here you can say that a n by g n has to be more than 1. This is an important uh, derivation because this says that when the normal dimensionless normal track acceleration which is a n by g n this has to be more than 1 then only the part will leave the track. So, for sufficient conveying velocity we have to have the normal track acceleration more than 1 this is the uh, condition here. Now, let us discuss the effect of frequency. Now, the result of the theoretical work says that the mean conveying velocity v m is inversely proportional to the vibration frequency f. Now, what do you call it as a mean conveying velocity that means, this is the speed of the part along the track of the vibratory bowel feeder and the track is inclined once again and this is going spirally uh, along the inside wall of the uh, ball feeder. So, we need the large conveying velocity because we need the parts to be uh, to be transmitted to the exit of the ball feeder at a faster rate. So, for mean conveying velocity v m this is proportional to frequency this has been found out theoretically 
and this does mean that this is f into v m is equal to constant means that the high conveying velocity for high conveying velocity so the, therefore, we need the high feed rates high conveying velocity means the high feed rates it is desirable to use as low frequency as possible because f into v m is constant. So, if you are increasing the v m so to make them constant f has to be sufficiently low as low as possible. However, since the track acceleration must be kept constant, this result means a corresponding increase in the track amplitude. Meaning, we are decreasing the uh, frequency because we want to increase the Vm and f into Vm have to remain constant, product of f into Vm has to remain constant. So, therefore, one option is to increase the track amplitude. This is the, the conclusion of the effect of vibration, effect of sorry, effect of frequency that since f into v m is constant. So, for higher value of the conveying velocity v m we have to use as low frequency as possible and that does mean that we have to increase the amplitude of track amplitude of vibration. Next uh, let us see the effect of the track acceleration all right track acceleration we mean that a n by g n which is the normal track acceleration. I would like to remind you that normal track acceleration is the one which decides or defines the performance of the bowel feeder. Now, for the part to hop we said that a n by g n has to be more than 1 all right. At first now with what is happening is as if you see the curve this is actually the experimental curve and this has been this curve has been taken for, for uh, angle of inclination 0 degree for a flat track and for the static coefficient of friction as this is uh, some uh, I mean let us say this is near near 1. Okay. Now, this has been taken for the different uh, vibration angle 20 degree, 40 degree and 60 degree and when we are increasing the normal track acceleration as we can see that f into v m which is in the uh, in the y axis that is the conveying velocity this conveying velocity is increasing all right. In all these cases for any uh, value of the uh, vibration angle whether it is 20 degree or 40 degree or 60 degree with the increase in the a n by g n the conveying velocity increases that is the first conclusion that we can make from the experimental curve uh, which is shown here. Now, the second conclusion is that when we are increasing let us say beyond 1.7 okay, these curves are actually saturating in the sense it is actually not increasing anymore as the increasing order we are seeing for the other values of the normal track acceleration. Now, what happens here is that when the a n by g n is more that means the part is hopping more and more. Okay. Now, if it is going beyond 1 it starts hopping and more than 1 up to let us say 1.7 it is hopping more and more. Initially when it is let us say just crossed 1 it is hopping and coming back to the track and the impact velocity is uh, uh, not very high, but beyond 1.7 of the a n by g n value it goes up so much hops high and then impact velocity will be accordingly higher and by landing on the track of the ball feeder it actually topples it becomes uh, erratic. Okay. So, therefore, the conveying velocity does not increase anymore. So, this is the uh, this is the conclusion that we can say that we have to limit the a n by g n to up to a certain value beyond which the part will be unstable. Here it is written the part starts to hop as a n by g n more than 1 that we have seen earlier. At first the velocity of impact as the parts land on the track is small, but as the track acceleration is increased the impact velocity also increases until at some critical value the parts start to bounce. Now, what we say as the critical value? it also depends on the uh, mass of the part, it depends on the uh, track, it depends on the material of the part and the track material. So, depending on all those factors this, this can be somewhere between 1.6, 1.7 up to 2 it has been seen in the practice. So, these are the critical values depending on type of the part, depending on the type of the track, depending on the bowel feeder that you are using overall. Okay. 
uh, this is the effect of uh, track acceleration. So, once again summing up increasing that and the normal track acceleration increases the uh, conveying velocity up to a certain level after that it is uh, unstable. Okay. Uh, next is the effect of vibration angle. So, uh, let us see what happens as the vibration angle is increases. Here it is x axis is the vibration angle, y axis is the conveying velocity f into Vm. By the way conveying velocity is given in hertz inch per second. So, it is an American system because the uh, data given uh, um, by the American authors. So, therefore, it is inch by system in India of course, it will be centimeter or meter per second. So, this is the, uh, the, the frequency f it is in the hertz and inch per second or centimeter per second or meter per second is the v m. So, f into v m this is in the y axis and x axis has the vibration angle. So, for different values of static coefficient of friction starting from 0.2 to 0.6, you can see that as the vibration angle is increasing, the conveying velocity is increasing and after that it is actually decreasing okay, for 0.6, for 0.4 as well as for 0.2 and it is going. Now, it can be explained by the same phenomena as we have seen earlier. For example, for this case that as the frequency is increase as the vibration angle is increasing. So, this n by g n increases and it is actually getting the impact well in the higher impact veloci velocity zone. So, therefore, the f into v m conveying velocity decreases. So, therefore, these curves also show that there is uh, there, there is an uh, optimum vibration angle for a given condition. For example, if we have the mu is equal to 0 0.6, this is a static coefficient of friction is 0 0.6. In that case, the uh, maximum conveying velocity can be obtained somewhere around 10 uh, degree of the uh, vibration angle. See for example, if we have the 0 0.4 for example, then this maximum velocity could be somewhere around 30 degree or 30 something degree. So, this is how we can actually experimentally find out the curves and we can find out what would be the uh, optimum value of the vibration angle. So, that we can accordingly design the suspension springs and we can accordingly select the electromagnet for the uh, ball feeder. Now, these curves are made for a track and inclination angle of 4 degree and the normal track acceleration as the 1.2. Okay. Next, let us say effect of uh, track angle. Okay. So, this is the track inclination angle in the x axis and y axis as always its output. So, this is the conveying velocity in hertz inch per second it is given and the curves these are experimental curves taken for the vibration angle of 20 degree and the static coefficient of friction as 0 0.2. Okay. And for different values of normal track acceleration starting from, um, from 0.5 0 0.7, 0 0.9 and so on up to 1.5, we have seen the effect of the track inclination angle as we are increasing the track inclination angle, what happen, happens to the conveying velocity. Find one thing here in these curves that this is the 0 conveying velocity, above that there is a positive conveying velocity, below that the conveying velocity is negative, there is no conveying velocity upwards, it is coming back. So, therefore, let us see what happens. For a very small track angle, let us say somewhere up to this for maximum of track inclination, sorry, maximum of uh, n by g n is equal to 1.5, we have the uh, positive f into v m, positive conveying velocity. But see here what happens is one thing you can actually conclude from these curves that for the lower track angle that is 0 degree, the conveying velocity is maximum. This is one conclusion that can be drawn from here. Second conclusion is that for the as the track angle is increasing to the higher level, let us say maximum of 5 and above, there is no conveying velocity which is positive and all the other conveying velocity will be below 0 which is that means backwards, this is a negative. Now, from here there is one more thing which is very important that the parts will be going from the below to the and it will be riding above the track, above the track. So, on the ground level 
the track angle is 0 and for the mechanical design of the track we have to give some angle because it has to be inclined. So, normally it is actually 3 to 4 degree the design that is the track angle inclination track inclination angle. So, therefore, what happens is that at the ground level the velocity the conveying velocity will be maximum because here the curve shows that at a 0 degree that is the when the track angle is 0 which is flat the conveying velocity is maximum. But when the parts will be riding above the ground level above the flat that is the inclined level there the track inclination angle increases and therefore, the parts behind those parts which have gone up the parts which are located at the ground level at a 0 degree inclination angle they will actually push the parts above that you understand what I said. There is a pushing effect from the parts which are, which are at the ground level because there the track inclination angle is 0 degree they will push those parts will push the parts above and sometimes it may actually jam if the track is filled up with the parts the parts at the ground level can actually push and the uh, it can uh, jam at the exit or in between on the tracks if there are some orienting devices that we will discuss later on. Those orienting devices can be jammed by the parts which are pushing which are at the flat level of the of the track. Here it is I will read this the highest velocities are always achieved when the track angle is 0 degree from here it can be seen as the 0 degree the track and uh, the maximum uh, f into v m could be achieved. The mechanical design of a bowel feeder necessitates a positive track angle of 3 to 4 degrees because the track is the inclined as I said in order to raise the parts to the bowel outlet. Therefore, the parts located at the bottom having 0 degree track angle will push the other parts on the track where the track angle is more than 0 and this may create the jamming at the uh, outlet or jamming at the uh, orienting devices as I said. So, this is a very important phenomena because we have to find out that how these track angles could be designed from this concept point of view. Let us say uh, what is the effect of the coefficient of friction. So, overall if I say if I do not even look at the experimental curves we can say that if the coefficient of friction overall is increasing between the track and the part the conveying velocity will be higher that is one conclusion that we can make ok. Because it is a rougher surface so there will be less slip it is not smooth and if the track is very smooth then the part can slip and the f into v m can decrease. Let us see what happens experimentally. Here we have the coefficient of friction in the x axis we start from 0.2 and it goes up to 1 coefficient static coefficient of friction and in the y axis we have that f into v m conveying velocity in hertz inch per second and we have taken uh, 0, 50, 100, 150 up to 250 of positive conveying velocity. So, these curves experimentally again have been taken for a 0 degree of track inclination angle and 20 degree of the uh, vibration angle. So, these curves have been taken for different values of the normal track acceleration starting from 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9 up to 1.5 all right. So, first thing that we can see is that as the coefficient of friction is increasing the conveying velocity increases. So, this is a normal thing because it is the less smoother is the track and it can facilitate the parts to go up if the uh, coefficient of friction is incre increased. Now, uh, for practical values of track acceleration an increase in coefficient of friction leads to an increase in the conveying velocity that is one thing. Hence, increasing of static coefficient of friction by coating the track with rubber is justified. Coating can also reduce the noise level due to the motion of the parts. See as I said the parts are moving not just sliding over the track mind it it is actually hopping and landing on the on the on the track again, but at the same time it is going uh, you know uh, forward. So, therefore, because of that impact velocity there is a noise ok and to reduce the noise also you can track the you can uh, coat the track with the rubber 
uh, is doing two things. One is that it is increasing the coefficient of friction and therefore, the conveying velocity increases but it is up to a certain level as you can see. Of course, the coefficient of friction cannot go beyond 1. So, therefore, up to 1 you can see that the conveying velocity is increasing for all values of the normal track acceleration starting from 0.5 to 1.5. Okay. Now, another thing that you have to consider that whether you, are be, you will be uh, coating the track with the rubber or not that also depends on what kind of material you are using, combination of material you are using for the track and the part. So, depending on that you can you can actually decide from the experience that what kind of uh, coating will be required. Rest of the things we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.